I know I've kept you waiting. That's from Smash, if you're too young to know what that is. Oh my god, Beret! Welcome back to my theatrical YouTube channel. If you're meeting me for the first time, hello! My name is Mickey Joe, and I am obsessed with all things theatre. And this is my YouTube channel, where I review the shows that I have been invited to go and see as an independent professional theatre critic here in the UK. And I talk about theatrical news and drama and gossip, and I react to stuff. And sometimes I get to talk about movie musicals as well. And I am very aware that I promised you this video a long time ago, as alluded to in my little introduction. I know you have been waiting for this video, and I apologise. There have been so many things that have preempted it, and I needed to wrap up the end of the year, and then talk about new stuff, and there were other shows that I needed to review, but finally, I am going to give you my spoiler-filled review of Matilda the movie. So if you are new to my channel, I've already posted a video on here with my spoiler-free review of Matilda for those who hadn't had the chance to see it yet because it came out in cinemas in the UK much earlier than the US Netflix release date. So I didn't want to go out there and put a bunch of spoilers on the internet before half of my subscribers had had a chance to see it. Now, hopefully everyone has had the opportunity to see Matilda. I feel like I can speak about it a little more freely. So I'm going to be giving you a similar review, but with a lot more detail, letting you know what I thought about specific choices and changes and differences between the show and the film, what I thought about individual characterizations, individual moments, vocal performances. We're going to discuss it all in a tremendous amount of detail. Stay tuned for all of that. Now, if you enjoyed today's video, first of all, make sure you're subscribed to my staged YouTube channel so you don't miss any of my upcoming content. I have so many exciting things planned, you have no idea. Second of all, I'm also on other social media platforms. You can go and find me on there. I am at Mickey Joe Theatre on Instagram, on Twitter, and on TikTok. And finally, I've recently launched YouTube membership. So for just £2.99 a month, or the equivalent in whatever your currency may be, you can become one of my YouTube members and you gain access to early previews of new videos, also my exclusive first impression series where I review literally every show that I go and see before the show, in the interval and after to give you my immediate unfiltered thoughts and also a lot of other fun exclusive content that I film just for my members and stuff that I'm able to capture at press launches, events, and curtain calls. Click on the link in the description of this video to sign up to that. Now, let's talk about Matilda, the musical, the movie. So broadly, I really enjoyed this film and I teetered between giving this a four and a five star review, but ultimately, I am not really a film critic. I am a theatre critic, and I feel a lot more comfortable talking about live entertainment than I do about cinema. I have never purported to be any kind of a film critic, and here is the real tea. I was not invited to this film to review it. I was invited to a social media event with a bunch of TikTokers and influencers. So I was invited in my capacity as a YouTuber to talk about it on socials and make content, which is what I have done. But the film critics were invited to a whole thing at the BFI. That is not the event that I went to. I'm going to review it here nonetheless because I have thoughts about it as a fan of the musical, but I'm not here giving you my expert film critic opinion and I don't want you to take it as such. So from the beginning of this film, we have this very different introduction scene. The song has been changed substantially from the stage version of Miracle to the film version. We have some lovely solo work by Matt Henry, but immediately we see that Matilda's parents as characters are going to be a little bit more sidelined. Matilda's mother no longer has the whole backstory about the fact she's meant to be at a ballroom dance competition. Her solo verse from that song is cut entirely. I like the introduction with the babies singing the song. I think it's clever that we've modified all of the lyrics to have these parents relocated from a primary school to a nursery. You do lose Roald Dahl's opening statement about childhood in general, and I think it's kind of more specific to school. Some of the things he said about parents' attitudes towards their children being the best. If you don't know a lot of the lyrics of Miracle, refer to things that Roald Dahl says immediately at the beginning of Matilda the book. But at the same time, in the show, none of those children or those parents have anything to do with Matilda's world. They exist only as a contrast to when we meet Matilda. Whereas in a film, it makes sense for the first scene to be introducing her. So it's in the hospital where she is about to be born. So just slightly more relevant to her story. I feel like that makes sense because a film audience would find it a little more odd that we were being shown this completely contrasting scene that has nothing to do with her. 
I want to talk about some of the changes specifically to the songs. The structure of the show into the film has changed a little bit and Michael, Matilda's brother, is gone as a character. I have no issue with that. I think it makes more sense for Matilda's parents just to resent having a child at all rather than to have already had a son and really want their second child to also be a son. That always was a little bit odd. So with him gone, it leaves more room for Matilda's miserable upbringing to make a little bit more sense. I do wish we had Loud just because Aliash from Strictly had been cast as Rodolfo and I think that would have been a really fun sequence. I've heard rumours of reasons why it might have been cut, um, that ultimately the performance wasn't looking the way they wanted it to. I don't know if that is true or not, uh, but I think if we're cutting telly, then also cutting loud makes sense. And I understand cutting telly from a structural point of view because we don't need this energy at the start of the second act because there's no interval on film. That's always something that they have to get around in movie musical adaptations. So the school song intro is now starting a lot slower and transitioning to a faster bit. I don't know if I loved that or if it added anything, but I also don't think that it made it that much worse. Smell of Rebellion, on the other hand, starts a lot faster than it previously did. I mean, the start of Smell of Rebellion on stage is inherently very theatrical and free and sort of chanteuse-esque so arguably doesn't work as well on film that one I get telly being gone like I said before I understand but it does mean that when Matilda sings about the telly in the song quiet we haven't seen any references to the telly beforehand that's not something we see much and there are a few things in this film that we don't see but are made reference to um, that I think perhaps we ought to know about. The Mafia, we never see uh, like we do in the stage production. The, these Russian Mafia characters that motivate a lot of the end parts of the plot. Uh, we just hear about them. This little girl is also gone, and that makes me sad because I do really enjoy that song. But I understand the value of not having Miss Honey really singing um, until the moments uh, that she is in this film. Until when I grow up and then really hearing her voice properly for the first time in my house. Because with a musical on stage, everyone has to sing because it's how they put across their emotions but on film when someone is singing there is something about it that looks inherently slightly more confident so if you're trying to portray a shy character or a character who hasn't fully come to terms with their feelings and is just a little bit reluctant to be that bold then it makes sense to have them not sing at all until they are ready to and it will make that moment all the more powerful By the end of Miracle, we understand what the vibe is going to be for these musical numbers, because this is a big question. Whenever we have a film adaptation of a musical, how are you going to do the musical numbers? Are you going to do them completely realistically and raw and honest, where people just break into song in the exact scene they were in with live vocals, with very little glamour about it? Are you going to do a complete transformation dream sequence like something in Chicago? Are you going to fall somewhere in between? And what Matilda does is it takes us to this fantasticalized world, not because it's glitzy and glamorous, but because we are seeing these musical numbers through the lens of a child's boundless imagination. That's the interpretation I feel here from Matthew Warchus. It feels as though we are seeing Matilda as a story through a child's eyes. And I think there's something really special about that. I'm really special about positioning an adult audience to have to look through that perspective as well. There's other songs that make me think this, and it's specifically When I Grow Up, the way that that has been brought to film. We have these kids suddenly flying airplanes around the sky. It's a bit of an extended sequence. There's a part of me that thought maybe it had gone on a little bit long, but I think it was quite lovely and was going to get a lot of people talking. I feel like we have to remember that a big part of the audience of this film is meant to be children. And what struck me after when I grew up was that they were probably going to walk away from the film and that was the scene they were going to talk to their parents about. I feel like that's the one that kids are going to remember most with the boy flying the plane and the motorbike, the bit where he's driving the motorbike and when I grow up, I just feel like kids are going to be talking about that afterwards and that's something that's gonna get them really excited. So for the most part, this is how the musical numbers are achieved. They are high concept and they are not necessarily realistic. And I think that works for this. I think it's still a Roald Dahl story and we expect a lot of color. The color palette is not always completely vibrant. It's perhaps a little bit bleaker than you might expect for a Dahl story. Matilda on stage is so bright and so colorful in its set design. This has its moments. Usually they are when something more joyful is happening and a lot of Cruncham Hall is 
reduced to a slightly bleaker color palette, you know, and there's a benefit to this as well, other than Red Beret Girl, who somehow manages to get away with contravening what is presumably a very stringent school uniform, but it's supposed to speak to her rebellious nature, because, you know, Parisian, rebellious, Les Miserables, it's, it's the whole vibe. Hortensia is her name, by the way, Red Beret Girl, if you were curious. But I liked that that was how they did the musical numbers because this was one of my biggest complaints about the movie Cats. I thought the scope of the film Cats was disappointingly narrow and very similar to the filmed stage version that starred Elaine Page. Because what ended up happening in Tom Hooper's movie musical adaptation of Cats was you just had these cats who eventually were meeting in this big building, kind of like a theater that had something resembling a stage, and they kept singing their songs while performing on the stage. I'm like, that's what they do in the stage production. You could have gone anywhere. You're making a film now. This is not a stage show. You can take us anywhere you want to. But for the most part, we kept ending up back in that same location. So I like that Matilda took us up in a hot air balloon while she is singing Quiet. That was beautiful and stirring and atmospheric. So I have so many great things that I want to say about this film. So many lovely touches that I really enjoyed and I want to shout them out specifically. I thought it did a really fantastic job in being tonally so different from that previous 90s film adaptation by Danny DeVito. I thought this version of Matilda is so unrecognizably different. It focuses on different elements within the plot, and there are some iconic Matilda scenes that existed only in that film that we don't see. Whether an American audience will be enraged by this, I do not know. But I thought it did really well to just be utterly incomparable, and that was probably a very good move. My absolute favorite thing about this film adaptation was the story within a story. And this is very different to the other Matilda film as well. But the scenes with Mrs. Phelps, where Matilda is creating the story in her head of the acrobat and the escapologist, and we are getting gradually more and more immersed into it as an audience, and Matilda and Mrs. Phelps become spectators within the story, and we see all of it, utterly expert use of cinematography and having the options that cinema affords you. It was mesmerizing and captivating and and so tense and thrilling and unbearable to watch at times. But also the parallels between that story and her own life experience and the way that she's crafting that story based around her own life and like the scene she has with her father when he throws her into the room and she's desperate for someone to come and save her and then she tells that particular part of the story where the escapologist comes back to find his daughter locked in the basement. Like that was heartbreaking and wonderful and sets up my favorite moment of the film. So here you go. If anyone was curious, this is my absolute favorite moment of the Matilda movie musical. So we've already seen this scene where Matilda sees herself inside the story and the escapologist comes back for his daughter and we see Matilda in that role and he sings to her and he tucks her into bed. I'm gonna cry just thinking about this. But in my house, which is already my favorite song from the score, when we see that scene again with Miss Honey as the child, it's incredible. It's so powerful. When we see this young girl and we understand that it's her, it's it's overwhelmingly emotional. The way that they have shot that in and amongst footage of her singing as an adult. Lashana Lynch's performance really sells it. Everything about that sequence is just wonderful and destroyed me emotionally. Oh my gosh. So let's talk about some of the individual performances. I really enjoyed Alicia Weir as Matilda. She has a tremendous seriousness about her. I like that her Matilda sort of comes across a little bit less adolescent than they do in the stage production and a little less joyful than Mara Wilson was as Matilda. I would describe her as the most vengeful Matilda I've ever seen. And she's sort of learning a sense of morality throughout the film rather than having this inherent understanding of it at the beginning. You know, she's well versed in so many different things. She has a tremendous cultural understanding because of all of the books and the advanced maths that she can do and science and all of these things. But her sense of morality is really something that we see take shape over the course of the film. Not that she behaves immorally, but she's really processing her understanding of wrong and right and coming to terms with why she's not seeing that 
the way she expects to in the world around her. Like when she goes up to Miss Phelps and asks for the section of books on revenge, that's a brilliant example of how we are having that narrative about her having an arc, because I think it's important that Matilda has an arc rather than just changing everyone else in the world around her because she knows better. And this gives Matilda a stronger arc than perhaps other versions of the Matilda story have. I think the acting she does with her eyes and her whole furrowed brow thing is fascinating and brilliant. She's a very talented actress who is clearly going to go on to tremendous things when she grows up. When she grows up. And some of the best acting I think she does is in those scenes where she has to insist to other people that everything is fine at home and that her parents are kind to her because she doesn't want to deal with the implications of telling people that they aren't and she doesn't want to get anyone in trouble. And when we can see the deceit of that in her eyes and sort of how it breaks her own heart to do it and how she's acting against her own self-interest to try and preserve the family as she knows it, that's really heartbreaking and very well performed. Emma Thompson as Miss Trunchbull. She has this sort of mad monarch energy where she's this crazed autocratic character. I think we see her become more unhinged and malevolent and clinging desperately to power than we've seen with any other Trunchbull before. We see them get maybe slightly flustered, but she is really reduced to mania in a way I think is incredibly satisfying. It's great to see Emma Thompson play such extraordinary, passionate emotions because she's normally very, very good at giving us this stoic, reserved, you, you know everything of what she's thinking, but it's, it's quite quiet and withdrawn. Think about her tearful scene in Love Actually. Think about um, her as Nanny McPhee. Granted, she's given many other fantastic performances, but this is one of the most extreme emotional characterizations I think I have seen from her, at least, on film. I mean, in The Smell of Rebellion, she is going for it. Not the world's most gifted vocalist, but selling the hell out of this song with that performance. I have no notes about The Smell of Rebellion because she delivers flawlessly. I think she commits 100% to this film. You can tell, even though she's playing this dastardly villain, you can tell she is having a tremendous amount of fun. And so I was utterly won over by her in this role. I thought she was brilliant as was Lashana Lynch. I absolutely fell in love with Lashana Lynch as Miss Honey, and she was another one. I was so intrigued after she was cast because I feel like we've only had the opportunity to see her do much more serious things in these superhero films or Bond films. And I was like, what is Lashana Lynch going to do in such a different, vulnerable role? I've never seen her play anything less than bravado and confidence. And she was wonderful and, and heart-shattering and the genuine affection that she was displaying towards all of the children, towards Matilda, with such warmth, and it was so endearing, it was so, so charming. It's so important that you fall in love with Miss Honey as a character, and you believe her relationship and her fondness towards Matilda, and we did completely. The softness with which everything was delivered. It was so, so tender. The vocals were soulful and moving, yet still for a cinematic version of the film, the right amount of withdrawn. I wouldn't have wanted her to belt it out as as declaratively, perhaps, as they do in the stage production, because that wouldn't have worked on screen, necessarily. But there are some lovely subtle notes in her performance as well. Her demeanor towards Matilda slowly adjusts, and even her reluctance slightly when Matilda goes to hug her, when she says that's the biggest hug in the entire world, because she doesn't expect this kind of reciprocity of affection either because of her past. And she's playing this warmth and this vulnerability, but also this lingering trauma as well. We see it when she's reluctant to go back to her house right towards the end of the film with Matilda. And Matilda has to usher her towards the building because she's playing on the lingering effects of this childhood trauma, which is brilliant. Some performances that didn't make me as excited, Matilda's parents did what they could with the material that they had. So a lot of their roles were minimized and downsized and sidelined because their big songs were cut. Matilda's father would usually sing telly, Matilda's mother would usually sing loud. Those were both absent from the film. So what they're left with is ultimately a caricature where they're just playing this one feeling which is indifference and we don't ever really get to explore what it is 
that they're dissatisfied with in their own lives that makes them behave the way they do towards Matilda. We don't understand enough about them as characters, and we don't have the time with them as characters for that to really make any sense. So they become cartoon caricatures, and they play that very well, but that's all they have available to them. The one person I wish was a little bit broader was Sindhu V as Mrs. Phelps, because we've seen some wonderful, expressive, and buoyant, and and bubbly and fun Mrs. Phelps's on stage in the West End, and I wanted a little bit more of that from Sindhu V. She felt a little bit subdued, and it's not even that she has to sing and she's a non-singer appearing in a movie musical, it just felt like her energy level was maybe at a 4 out of a 10, and I needed her to be a little bit more exuberant. You know, the things that she's being told by Matilda in this world that she's transporting her to should be an overwhelming revelation that should stun and amaze her. And she becomes hooked on this story, but she's playing it hooked more like a woman who's gotten hooked on a really juicy romance novel rather than this mind-blowing thing from a child. Some stagey cameos to look out for. I wrote down a few that I noticed. Gina Beck, uh, Lauren Ward, both of whom are ex-Miss Honeys, Emma Williams, who I'm convinced was involved with Matilda at some point, possibly in a workshop stage, someone can correct me about that, uh, Craig Mather of Les Mis, Julie Yamini, who I saw in Cinderella last year, Joel Harper-Jackson, there are many, many more as well, especially in that opening scene, but those are the ones that I spotted. And finally, I will say, probably the highlight performances of the entire film were from this ensemble cast of children. They were fantastic. You've already probably seen those clips of the dances in Revolting Children and in School Song. So, so talented. And that's the thing that will stay with you after seeing this film is, my gosh, those kids are talented. And that's an excellent thing as well. My friend Philip Joel, I think, put it very well when he remarked after having seen this film for the first time that this is going to make so many young people excited about doing musical theatre and getting into performing arts. And I think that's a beautiful thing when this film can ignite a child's passion for performing. I think a great many children will get into it because of seeing this movie. And that's wonderful. couple more actual cinematography thoughts. There were a few strange moments that just came across a little bit juvenile, and I don't know if this was meant to play to the children watching the film, but there was a seagull on the roof quite near the beginning that we stayed on for a weirdly long time, long enough for me to remember and go, why are we still looking at this seagull? That was odd to me. There's also occasionally a tendency to show the literal things that are being talked about in a song lyric, or that mean the same thing. So in the song Naughty, when Matilda sings, doesn't mean that you just have to grin and bear it. It shows us a bear. Also in my house, it begins to get a little bit repetitive when Miss Honey is talking about all these different things and referring to all the different things that she says in the My House lyrics, and it shows us each of those for a little bit. I'm glad that it doesn't do that the entire time, but even for the brief time that it does, it starts to get old very quickly because you can predict what's going to happen. Like, yes, now it's going to show us that, now it's going to show us that. It's the way that a very juvenile filmmaker would go about filming that scene, and I feel like there are more sophisticated ways to do it. So I'm glad it doesn't do that the whole time, but it did begin to annoy me. I also think that tension would be better established with regards to the whole Chokey situation. Chokey is talked about a lot. Chokey is a big plot device, and we need to have this threat. We need to understand the severity of it and the fear of it. And unlike the previous Matilda film adaptation by Danny DeVito, we never see someone in the Chokey. Ought we see someone in the Chokey in order to have this fear kind of grounded, because it seems like an empty threat, because it, when it looks so awful, it seems unthinkable that you'd actually put a child in there, and it just seems like an empty threat, the existence of which is being used as a deterrent that will never actually get used. So I think, <laughs> this makes me sound awful, I'm a former teacher as well, I cannot believe I'm saying this, but they should have put a child in the chokey, not a real one, they can get a, they can get a child-shaped doll. Not an inflatable one though, because that, that would deflate. I liked the adaptation of Dennis Kelly's excellent book of the musical into a screenplay. There were a couple of slightly heavy-handed moments. Again, it is for a family audience, which involves kids. Uh, but when Matilda's father is telling her about Miss Trunchbull and all of the things that she hates, she hates children like this and blah, 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 blah. And he's telling her all of her backstory. It begins to feel a little bit heavy-handed. And it feels like it's just an easy way of getting that information to us as an audience. The new song, Still Holding My Hand. This has grown on me since listening to it, but I do think 
that Tim Minchin has evolved a little bit stylistically in the years between having written the Matilda score and now writing this. It sounds a little bit more Gary Barlow. It has a little bit more of a pop song energy than the rest of it, which sounds very musical theatre, dare I say it, a little bit Sondheim-y. And I think there's a section of the song where When I Grow Up, the melody of When I Grow Up could be overlaid a little bit more. It is teased, but I want it to be more of a feature where it's overlaying it at the end. I think that would just sort of welcome it more readily into the rest of the Matilda score. But those have been my spoiler-filled thoughts on Matilda the Musical the movie. Thank you so much for watching this video. As I said, apologies that it took so long to bring it to you, but I hope that now it is finally here you have enjoyed. If you did enjoy, make sure to subscribe to my Stager YouTube channel. If you would like to see more exclusive content and see some of these videos a little bit earlier, click on the link in the description and sign up to become one of my YouTube members. And let me know in the comments section what you thought about the Matilda movie. And you can use as many spoilers as you like. What was your favorite scene? Who gave your favorite performance? What did you think about the changes from the show to the film? Let me know your thoughts. I hope that everyone is staying safe and that you have a stagey day. For 10 more seconds, I'm Mickey Joe Theatre. Oh my god, hey, thanks for watching, have a stagey day. Subscribe! <laughs>